My name is Richard Curtis. I work for Adobe here in the UK and I look after digital imaging. And today I'm very excited to talk to you about the new Photoshop 14.2 release and 3D printing. What I'd like to do really today is, uh, is to bring in a few 3D models into uh, Photoshop 14.2 and just show you how well the 3D printing analysis works inside the product now. And the fact that you can just almost import the model and press print and let Photoshop do the rest of the work and then you can print straight out to the 3D printer. Okay, so let's open the first model. The first thing to notice when you open a 3D model inside Photoshop 14.2 is that it tells you the 3D scene size and this is important because it tells us how big the model is. So you can see here I brought in a model of Roger and he's just posing away and effectively we just want to print him. Now as in the blog the, on the right hand side there's a properties panel and in there has got some uh, 3D printing facilities. You can also set up the 3D printer. Now, I don't have a 3D printer attached at this point in time, but if I did, you could just attach it using a USB cable and Photoshop will talk directly to the supported printers. So for this print job, we're just gonna go print local and we're gonna choose the MakerBot Replicator 2X. You can see when we do that, the actual volume chamber is, is, uh, is, uh, is too big uh, for the model. So what we want to do is resize the model to fit and make use of the space. And we do that by clicking the scale to print volume button. To get Photoshop to go and create all the scaffolding and fix the uh, 3D model, all we have to do is press the print button. This process would normally take a 3D designer quite a lot of time. They'd have to print it once, work out where the supports need to be, uh, and any failures and any fixing they have to do, bring it back into the software, and any other software apart from Photoshop, fix those models and then reprint. This can go on iteratively for quite a long time, um, but you can see in Photoshop, all we have to do is press print once and it makes, the print, it makes this 3D model ready for printing. So this actually is in real time. I'm not speeding this up for you so that you can see it's saving significant amount of time. It also means the models are watertight and ready to go straight to print. It also means that if you are using a bureau, and we'll get into the Shapeways Bureau in a little while, you could then bring the model into Photoshop, you could fix it and repair it in Photoshop, and then you could send it out to a bureau. So you can work it because you can export this as an STL as well, and as a fully fixed STL. So you can see that didn't take long at all, and you've ended up with a really nice model that's got all the scaffolding and the raft. And notice at the scaffolding, is, uh, is with enough space around the model so the model prints freely, but also the, um, and you can see on the blog post as well, the points of intersection between the scaffolding and the actual um, object itself are small enough that you can just clip with a pair of scissors or a cutting tool of another type. Okay, for this next section, we're gonna to go to MakerBot's Thingiverse and we're going to find the model, just a random one. It's not pre-prepared. And I'm just going to download that STL file, import it into Photoshop, and then we're going to send it for print. I haven't tried this, so this is all brand new, and it's not pre-rehearsed, so we'll just uh, see what happens. And there you can see the Thinkiverse GNOME has been pulled in without any problems, and is now ready for print. Notice that I don't really have to do anything to the model to get it to print. I can just press the print button after configuring where I want this to print and maybe which service I want to use on the Shapeway service in this release or, and the printer that we support. We support multiple printers. So again, we send the GNOME to print and it generates the uh, maps and it generates everything we need for the 3D model, including the scaffolding, and uh, we will see what happens the other side. Now you can see this model didn't require any uh, a lot of scaffolding, but uh, the scaffolding that has been created has done a pretty good job uh, of creating that. And it, again, it's small enough that you can just nip off with a, with a cutting implement to uh, release that model of its scaffolding. Okay, let's take another 3D asset. Uh, and this particular asset is a rocket. Uh, and what's interesting about the rocket is it was all fully created just inside Photoshop without any other software being involved. Now, the great thing about creating 3D inside Photoshop is it's automatically watertight. So it means it will print straight out of box if we look at the model, you can see that um, the, the main supports are going to be around the engine at the bottom of the aircraft. If you try to print this without support mechanisms, it'd be typical that the, um, the bottom section of this rocket would actually just uh, fall out of midair onto the raft. 
so you'd end up with spaghetti. So you can see there, Photoshop's created all the scaffolding around the main engine bay, and that's pretty much all it needed to, uh, to print this model. Now, as we move into the next section, there's a little video, and this video is showing how the MegaBot 2X will print this model as well, just in case you've never seen anything print before. So this is, again is straight out of Photoshop onto a MegaBot 2X that we've been running inside our labs. And the last model I'm going to use today, as you can see, is, uh, is a Starship. And the complexity here is that you've got a lot of things that are floating in midair. And so we're just going to press the print button and see what Photoshop has to say about this model. And, uh, and we'll look at the, uh, the print preview in a second. Notice how fast Photoshop is able to go and create the scaffolding, go fix the mesh and go fix everything about the 3D model, including the wall thicknesses and get it ready for print. And if we zoom in close, you can see all of the intersection structural points that we've created as part of the scaffolding. Okay, so earlier we talked about the Shapeways service. Now we've partnered with the company Shapeways.com and uh, Shapeways are a service provider for 3D printing. And the great thing about Shapeways is that they can print in um, different types of material. They print using resins and they're using sandstones and brass and metals and and all these other types of material which make really fantastic prints. So effectively, you can now take a 3D model from Photoshop CC, uh, export it uh, in the Shapeways format, then upload to uh, shapeways.com. Let's have a look at a couple of models and see how it works in Photoshop. You can see that as we choose the shapeways.com print to service, we then get a whole range of materials that we can print to. So for this exercise, let's take the full color sandstone. Um, I've, you know, this model has been made using Photoshop CC and also been painted and textured in the product as well. So it would make sense to have that as a full color model. Now you can see that the size of the model is too big for the uh, volume of the printer. So we can just very quickly um, hit the scale to print volume button, which will automatically resize this model for us and enable it to print in the chamber of the 3D printer. You can see here that Photoshop is going through its same process. It's repairing the meshes, it's repairing the minimum wall thickness, and it's getting the model ready to print. It doesn't take that long to do this compared to a manual process, which could take days and, and maybe even weeks on a very complex model. So um, this is the really exciting bit that, uh, that Photoshop did all the work for us. We can also pick up the prices from Shapeways as well and give you a rough idea how much this will cost to print. And there you go, we have a full colour generated model. Now notice that there are no scaffolding supports for this model and that's because it's a different way of printing. Uh, the, the sandstone uh, material doesn't require supports for this uh, printer type. Okay, so let's take the same model and print it in a different material. This time we're going to print in polished brass and for the sake of time we'll just use some Premiere Pro Magic and just speed this up so you can see the final result. And there you have it, so hopefully you found that of interest. Uh, we're very excited about 3D printing and the future now that uh, Photoshop CC is capable of doing 3D prints. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that and it was useful and we look forward to uh, seeing the things you print. Anyway, so um, thanks for that and look forward to speaking to you soon. Bye bye now.